The final weapon that we'll be considering, I've saved the best for the last, is the M1 Grand. General George S. Patton said this was the best battle, battle implement ever devised, and he was right. This helped win the war. It had its deficiencies. I've already mentioned the eight-round monobock clip that loaded into it, and basically, um, basically, you had to fire the eighth round before you could reload it. Now, this particular M1 Grand is very, very special. This is called a gas trap Grand. From uh, the gas trap Grands were made from uh, August 1937 to August of 1940. There were only roughly over 51,000 of these made. Virtually every one of these were converted to the later configuration called gas port. In fact, there are only about 24 of these that were in original condition left today. This is one of those. What's the difference between a gas port and a gas trap? You'll notice that the muzzle on this actually has a cap that goes over the muzzle. You remember the uh, G41 rifle that Germany came up with? This operates in a very similar uh, manner. It also had similar problems and you had carbon buildup and such in this. It was hard to clean, tended to be somewhat less reliable. This was the reason that the senators ended up shooting the M1 Grand Rifle. That was one of the major problems with this early rifle. So it was converted to what was called the gas port model. That's what the front end of an M1 Grand looks like. That's what you'll almost always see. If you see it the other way and it's for sale, buy it. So the important thing about this rifle, other than the fact that it's extreme rarity, is the fact that we actually have a provenance on this rifle. Very, very rarely do we realize or know who actually was issued a military weapon, where it was used, what campaigns it was used in. This is the exception to that rule. This particular rifle was issued to Private Max Bryan in Panama in 1943. Private Max Bryan was a member of the 551st Parachute Infantry Battalion. Their job down there in Panama was to invade Martinique in the Caribbean. Now, who would have thought? It turned out that Martinique had a governor who was allied with Vichy France. And as such, he was very sympathetic to the German cause. And the U-boat activity in that area was centered around Martinique. They were actually using it as a base of operations. So the 551st was tasked with invading Martinique. That was the worst kept military secret of all time. They publicized the fact, we're going to invade Martinique. <laughs> the Vichy governor decided maybe that's not such a good idea. He went back to France. <laughs> so the invasion never took place. The 551st then went to the United States to train. And then they were actually dropped into southern France, the invasion of southern France, Operation Dragoon. This rifle was there. They then went to the Maritime Alps, held off the Germans from crossing into northern France. This rifle was there. Lastly, they were thrown into the Battle of the Bulge. They participated in a six-day, six-night counteroffensive against the Germans. And during that counteroffensive, they lost 84% of their members, the second highest casualty rate of any unit in the United States Army. Immediately after that, the survivors were rolled into the 82nd Airborne, and Max Bryan brought this rifle home. So that's the history. That's the history. Very, very special rifle. Now, you'll notice something on the side of this rifle. Show it to you in just a second. What are all those dents? Looks like so. A woodpecker got a hold of that rifle. In fact, the eight-round monoblack clip was unreliable if the bullets were not seated evenly into the clip. So the soldiers would take the clip, they would usually bang it against the side of their helmet, or in the case of Mac Private Max Bryan, he banged the points of the bullets against the side of the rifle. You can tell that he was under a lot of stress when he did this. He was in a big hurry. 
So that concludes our talk about uh, World War II rifles and carbines. I'd like to say, though, that all of these rifles and carbines, in fact, any tool used during war, is simply an inanimate object. It takes men, and now women, to pick those objects up and use them to defend our freedom. We certainly owe them a tremendous gratitude, a debt of gratitude. I would also like to say I'd like to give a special salute to the rifleman, this guy right here. Without him, we wouldn't be living the type of life that we live. So, here's to the grunt, the ground slogger and the mudslinger. Thank you.